Hi, this is Bhaskar Napte from Pharma Growth Hub and uh, as a part of today's discussion, we will try to understand how one can conduct a method validation for residual solvent by using gas chromatography technique. So there is a guidance provided by ICH guideline Q2R1 with respect to what parameters needs to be assessed when someone conduct the method validation. So the very first parameter which is mentioned is the specificity. Now, what is the purpose of conducting a specificity? You need to assess whether there is an interference from the sample matrix or the diluent to your interested analyte. And in this case, your interested analyte is nothing but the solvent that you are going to quantify. It can be methanol, ethanol, it can be hexane or anything which is a part of your testing procedure. So, as there is a evaluation of the interference, now what components you need to consider for interference evaluation? So in case if it is a drug product, let us say a paracetamol tablet and you have a residual solvent which is a ethanol. So you need to prepare a placebo means mixture of all the excipients plus API. It is also very important that you must also add an API while preparing a placebo. But you must avoid addition of the solvent that you the solvent that you are going to quantify. For example, if the ethanol is the solvent used for paracetamol tablet manufacturing, then you must exclude the ethanol from this placebo preparation. So just mixture of placebo, all excipient plus API is going to be necessity in case of the drug product. But in case of just simple API where you are going to conduct the residual solvent validation, the placebo will not come into a picture. Then only diluent is uh, required to assess the interference at the retention time of your residual solvent. Let us say you have more than one residual solvent to be assessed, methanol and ethanol. So you also have to confirm that these two solvents are not interfering at the each other's retention time. So methanol and ethanol should also get separate from each other. That is the purpose of the last point that no interference now from placebo plus API, excluding solvent in case of drug product. Diluent is common for drug product and uh, API and other solvent is again a common for drug product and the API. So this is how you can conduct the specificity for residual solvent by using gas chromatography. The second important parameter when it comes to validation is the precision. So how one can conduct the precision? Uh, and the precision can be determined at three different levels. One is repeatability, second one can be intermediate precision and third one can be a reproducibility. Let us understand how one can determine the repeatability. So the repeatability can be determined or measured by preparing six sample solutions with the analyte concentration at the specification level. Now, what is the specification level of your analyte? That is your residual solvent. Let us say you are analyzing ethanol content in paracetamol tablet. And the specification for ethanol is not more than 5000 ppm. So, you are supposed to make a test solution containing 5000 ppm of ethanol and then, uh, you know, make such six sample preparations and then determine the, let us say, percent relative standard deviation or RST. So let us say my sample contain uh, 1000 ppm ethanol. Can I use that solvent for analyzing repeatability? Because the requirement is what? The concentration of the analyte should be at the specification level. But my specification level is not 1000 ppm but it is 5000 ppm. So additionally I need to spike 4000 ppm while preparation of the sample so that the entire content of ethanol will become now 1000 plus 4000 equal to 5000 and 5000 is nothing but my specification for ethanol. So that way you can use the spiking technique to prepare the repeatability samples. In case if you do not want to measure six samples at the specification level, you can also determine the precision or repeatability uh, by preparing three uh, solutions at three different 
levels may be at 50% level three preparations at 100% another three preparations and maybe 120% another three preparations so in at in all together i can measure the nine determinations at three different levels not the purpose of making this uh, three different level preparations this will also further help me to demonstrate that look here my repeatability is independent of the solute or analyte concentration see at six determinations you have only same concentration of the solutions which is 5000 ppm as we discussed earlier and someone someone may say that now you are getting the precision at 100 percent your specification level but will your method be precise at 50 uh, percent lower level maybe at higher level like 120 percent so to demonstrate that your method's precision is independent of analyte concentration these three determinations at three different levels will help you so this is the way you can conduct and conclude on to the repeatability of your precision study this is the first level of precision the second level of precision is called as the intermediate precision so you determine the repeatability and then on the another day you are going to use another instrument and you are going to ask another analyst to perform the similar kind of repeatability experiment right and then you will say okay now my results are also precise my percent energy requirement meets the acceptance criteria and that particular experiment is now called as an intermediate precision so on another day by using another instrument performed by another analyst is called as the intermediate precision the third level of precision is called as a reproducibility so you will conduct the similar kind of experiment that you conducted during repeatability but this time you will choose not your laboratory but the another laboratory maybe you have two different manufacturing sites one it one is at bangalore and another one is at hyderabad and you have conducted the repeatability in the bangalore's location so you can ask Hyderabad lab to conduct a similar kind of experiment and then that will become at the two different lab or two different locations. So that experiment will then be called as a reproducibility. So I hope you understand how one can conduct the specificity and precision study for the residual solvent. So before I move on to the next parameter, let me introduce myself briefly to you. My name is Bhaskar Napte and I have more than 20 years of experience into the pharmaceutical industry. I worked for companies like Dr. Reddy's, Apotex, US Vitamin, Glenmark and uh, I am the founder of Pharma Growth Hub. Now this is a platform which helps pharmaceutical professionals to boost their career growth by providing absolute clarity on various technical topics and helping them to identify new untapped opportunities within our network. There is an opportunity to become a lifetime member of the Pharma Growth Hub with never before offer. So please check the details given in the description below and join the Pharma Growth Hub today. The third parameter is uh, now the determination of limit of detection and the limit of quantification. So how one can determine the LOD and LOQ? Now again there are three different ways to determine that. The first one is by visual inspection. Second one can be by slope method. And the third one can be by a signal to noise ratio method. But in case of uh, this kind of analysis where you can achieve the signal, right? The visual inspection is uh, a traditional approach and not much followed and used in today's time. So I recommend you to follow the two different approaches. The first one can be by using a slope and a residual standard deviation. So how you can uh, determine the LOD and LOQ by the slope and uh, residual standard deviation approach. So here is the first step. Let us first understand how one can determine the slope for the calibration line. So you can draw a uh, linearity with 10 determinations. Means you can prepare the uh, ethanol solutions at 10 different concentration level. And then you will be able to calculate the slope of the calibration line. Now why these 10 determinations? Because ICH have not specified any number of determinations to, to calculate the slope of the calibration line. 
But if you look at the URACAM guidelines about the validation, then you will find the reference for the 10 number of determinations. So determine the linearity with the 10 determination and then calculate the slope of the line. So you got the first parameter now. Then what you need to do? Now as you are assessing the let us say limit of detection for ethanol and you will have some calculation in the mind that okay now the LOD for ethanol can be in this range. Maybe let us say in the range of uh, 100 to 200. In the range of 100 to 200. Now you are in the process of what? Determining the standard deviation. Isn't it? Because you need to determine the standard deviation. The first parameter, the slope was determined. The second parameter was you need to calculate the standard deviation for the residuals. So you will uh, draw a linearity within the range which is uh, possibly your limit of detection concentration and then you will calculate the residuals and according to the residuals you will be able to calculate the standard deviation of those residuals now what is mean by residuals if you draw a linearity for let us say 10 different uh, concentrations so are your points exactly going to fall onto the expected response they will not they will deviate by some value you are expecting to achieve let us say 1000 response but you achieved only 900 response so 1000 minus 900 becomes 100 that is your residuals for that particular concentration in another concentration you were expecting to have the 2000 response but you achieved only 1990 response so what is the residuals 2000 minus 1990 becomes 10 so you will be able to calculate the residuals for all these concentrations that you are drawing for the LOD determinations and then once you summarize these all residuals you will be able to also calculate the standard deviation for all these residuals and this is what required to now calculate the LOD and LOQ. So the calculation formula for LOD is what 3.3 into standard deviation for residuals divided by slope of the calibration line. And LOQ can be calculated with the calculation formula of 10 into standard deviation for the residuals divided by the slope. I hope you understand how one can determine the LOD and LOQ by using slope and standard deviation procedure. The second approach is uh, signal to noise ratio. So you need to again inject the solution of your analyte at near to LOD and LOQ. So you will be able to calculate the noise of the line where there is no signal appearing and then you will be able to calculate the height of the signal. So again by using the calculation formula which is given into the 621 general chapter, USP general chapter 621, you will be get further details on how much area has to be captured for calculation of the noise, how the signal is actually calculated and based on to that you will be able to determine a concentration where the signal to noise ratio is in between 1 as to 2 or 1 as to 3 and in case if your signal to noise ratio is about 1 as to 10 then you can say that this is my limit of quantitation. So this is just the assumptions now. These are not the, the, the confirmed values. You will be confirming these values at least for LOQ by conducting the precision and accuracy at the limit of quantitation. For LOD, there is no need to confirm the values by conducting precision and accuracy. You can just confirm maybe by injecting a triplicate uh, injection at LOD concentration and just understand whether you are getting the similar kind of uh, response or signal to noise ratio. So then the, the fourth important parameter when it comes to any kind of validation is the accuracy study. So accuracy study has to be conducted between reporting value to 120 percent of your specification concentration so reporting value is obviously going to become limit of quantitation in this case and for example if the uh, 5000 ppm is your concentration so 120 percent of percent of 5000 will become uh, 6000 ppm so 6000 ppm is going to become your 120 percent level so at least uh, uh, make the linearity accuracy solutions at uh, three different concentrations levels. So one is LOQ, 
and one is 120% which is a requirement. So you can select in between concentration which is third concentration or if you select more than three concentration it is absolutely okay to go with and at each level you need to determine the accuracy on three preparations. So you will be making three preparations at LOQ, three preparations at let us say 100% and again three preparations at the 120%. So understand the, the true value and understand what is the value that you have <coughs> calculated uh, out of your accuracy study. So ratio of this uh, value found divided by true value into 100 becomes the percent accuracy. So the next important parameter is the linearity now. So linearity has to be drawn with the five different concentrations level, of course, beginning from LOQ to 120% of your specification value. So prepare five different concentration out of the one stock solutions in case if it is not for NVISA Brazil. In case if it is for Brazil, then you have to prepare independent stock solutions by independent wings. And out of these three independent weighing stock solutions, you need to make these five different concentration levels. So once you prepare the five different concentrations, inject into the chromatographic system, understand the response, and then you can draw a curve by dropping by drawing the uh, concentration across x-axis and by plotting the response across the y-axis. Determine the slope, residual standard deviation, correlation coefficient, and understand the linearity of the line. Then the range is uh, determined with the three different parameters. One is precision, uh, accuracy, and the third one is the linearity. So for precision, what you need to do is, you know, as you remember that we have confirmed the precision, but at the specification level. As a part of range, you need to confirm the precision at the lowest level of your range, which is LOQ in this case and maybe at the 120% or the highest concentration level. So you can prepare the six solutions at LOQ level, six solution at 120% level, and then calculate the relative standard deviation. You need not to draw the uh, intermediate precision and uh, reproducibility. Only repeatability is going to suffice your requirement while conducting the precision for the range parameter. And accuracy we have already been discussed, linearity has already been discussed and hence these parameters can be taken from those respective studies. The last parameter when it comes to uh, residual solvent validation by gas chromatography is the robustness now. So how one can conduct the robustness? So robustness is actually going to determine that your result is not getting impacted because of the small kind of variation which is practically possible your results are going to be unchanged or within the variable window. The first parameter in the robustness study can be a solution stability in case if you are using the direct liquid injection technique. But in case if you are using the headspace technique, then the solution stability is not really necessary. See what is going to happen in case of residual solvent. There is no degradation possible in most of the cases. So what can happen at the end the solvent used or the residual solvent present into a sample can undergo evaporation and because of that your concentration can change over a period of time. But in case of headspace technique, you are actually putting the sample solution and standard solution into an airtight headspace vial, so there will be no scope for any kind of evaporation as such. And hence for headspace technique, the solution stability is not really a requirement. However, you can certainly consider the solution stability for the direct liquid injection, where the evaporation of the diluent, evaporation of this analyte solvent is very much possible. Then again, what kind of changes you can consider for conducting the robustness study? The flow variation of, let us say, plus or minus 10%, column variation of plus or minus 5 degrees Celsius, uh, while equilibration time of plus or minus 5 minutes and effect of variation of the while temperature maybe plus or minus 5 degrees Celsius can be considered during the robustness study. So thank you so much for watching this video.